Protecting his own power and preserving public order were now his highest priorities. And Caiaphas knew that Jesus must die. Did you know that a high priest ordered Jesus' death? The high priest Caiaphas played a pivotal role in the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This sacrificial death that Christianity was built upon. But later, haunted by rumors of Christ's resurrection, Caiaphas had a vision where he met the risen Messiah. This experience changed his life, filling the cunning high priest with guilt. What is this vision that changed him? What exactly did he see and hear? Join us as we travel back to Jerusalem to witness the two testimonies of Caiaphas, the chief Pharisee about Jesus of Nazareth. The High Priest Who Sentenced the Messiah Caiaphas served as the high priest in Jerusalem during a tumultuous period in Jewish history. As a member of the influential Sadducee party, he held both religious and political power. When a preacher named Jesus began performing miracles and attracting large crowds, Carphas became worried. I many believe Jesus was the Messiah. Caiaphas was concerned that Jesus' popularity could provoke the Romans and threaten his own position of authority. When he saw crowds cheering for Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, Caiaphas felt compelled to take action. He initiated the events that led to the trial and execution of Jesus, a figure many still believe to be the Son of God. During the reign of King Herod and under Roman rule, the high priesthood was mainly controlled by a small group of wealthy families in the Sadducee party. These families worked closely with the Romans, who found it convenient to handle Jewish matters through them. In exchange, the priests gained power, status, and riches. The high priest was at the pinnacle of this Jewish religious elite chosen by the Roman governor. He was responsible for maintaining order in Jerusalem and preserving stability in the Jewish faith. Any challenge to this established system threatened his own position and privileges. Jesus of Nazareth entered this politically charged religious environment. He was a preacher who spoke about the imminent arrival of the kingdom of God and attracted a large following among the Jewish commoners. His teachings made the authorities uneasy. However, when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem during Passover, and was greeted with enthusiastic cheers from pilgrims who believed he was the long-awaited Messiah, the high priest Caiaphas took notice. In a rush, Caiaphas called together members of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin, to his palace. They discussed among themselves what should they do about this man he's performing many. Miracles. And more and more people are starting to believe in him. And... They were concerned that if Jesus kept attracting followers, the Romans might interpret it as a challenge to their authority. This crackdown could jeopardize not only their positions of power, but also their lives. The safety of the entire Jewish nation was also at risk. Seeing the growing panic, the cunning high priest Caiaphas spoke up, scolding them that they didn't understand. He argued that it was better for one man to die than for the entire nation to be destroyed. Though he claimed to care about the Jewish people, Caiaphas was really only concerned about himself. He then bluntly stated that Jesus needed to be killed quickly. With those words, the powerful religious leader initiated a series of events that would lead to the trial and execution of Jesus Christ. Little did he know that Christianity would emerge from this, and within a few centuries, Roman persecution of Christians would make it the official religion of the very empire he was trying to appease. Caiaphas paced back and forth in his lavishly decorated chambers in the Temple of Jerusalem. As high priest of the Jewish Sanhedrin, the weight of leadership weighed heavily on his shoulders. He could hear the commotion rising from the streets below his windows, angry voices yelling, feet running to and fro. 
The city was on edge over the controversial preacher from Nazareth called Jesus. While some believed him to be the long-awaited Messiah, others saw him as a troublemaker, threatening to distort the social order. Caiaphas worried Jesus' provocations would bring the fury of Rome down upon Judea. Just the day before, Caiaphas received an urgent summons to stand trial before Pontius Pilate to explain his actions against this so-called King of the Jews. Rubbing his wrinkled forehead, Caiaphas recalled when he had first met the carpenter's son from Galilee three years ago. He had gone in disguise to listen to Jesus preach near the Sea of Galilee and was surprised by the young man's wisdom. Yet he also sensed the dangerous potency of his message. When Jesus healed the sick and lame right before his eyes, Caiaphas wondered, could he be the Messiah? Upon returning to Jerusalem, Caiaphas commenced a secret investigation into Jesus' background and trouble emerged. Many witnesses, both followers and detractors, attested A.H. to Jesus transgressing sacred Jewish customs. He associated with sinners like tax collectors and prostitutes. He did not keep the Sabbath and seemed to care little for ritual purity laws. Most alarming were Jesus' brazen claims to have authority over the temple, the law, and the entire Jewish priesthood. He declared ominously in one sermon that the time has come and the kingdom of God is near. The Sanhedrin elders concurred that Jesus threatened to divide the Jewish nation with his radical ideas. When Caiaphas learned Jesus had driven money changers from the temple courts, he could not stand it any longer. After his guards arrested Jesus in the olive groves of Gethsemane, Caiaphas determined to extract answers from the rappel rouser sitting on his carved gilded throne. In his judgment hall, Caiaphas stared down at the, um, unkempt prisoner with contempt. Jesus returned his gaze calmly as Caiaphas recited the litany of charges against him. The high priest pressed Jesus to explain his inflammatory actions and asked him, saying, If the council forgives him, will he desist from these activities in the future? Jesus lifted his thorn-pierced head defiantly and replied, I will not. After conferring with his temple elders, Caiaphas regretfully passed judgment. Death by crucifixion, he rationalized he had no choice but to remove this troubling threat to preserve the Jewish nation. Let his blood be on our hands and on our children's hands, Caiaphas thought grimly. Hours later, Caiaphas was shocked to receive word that this troublesome prisoner had been executed by the Romans. He sent an urgent message to Pontius Puisay, insisting that Jesus' trial was unlawful and should have come before the Jewish Supreme Court. He suspected Pilate rushed to judgment out of fear or malice. It was this hasty, unjust death sentence Caiaphas now found himself answering for before the Roman procurator. Snapping back to the present, Caiaphas sighed, and adjusted his emerald-encrusted breastplate. His servants arrived to escort him to Pilate's palace for interrogation. As Caiaphas descended through the frenzied city streets, he steeled himself to defend his people from Roman retaliation. Little did he know the humble Galilean he sentenced would soon turn the world upside down. And Caiaphas' role in the Messiah's death would live on forever. Astonishing reports swirled of a miracle man named Jesus displaying supernatural powers. Did he truly heal the sicken and subdue nature itself? Let's examine the accounts and see. The miracle worker from Nazareth. Someone cried out, It's Jesus of Nazareth. The cry rang out across the dusty village square on the warm spring afternoon. The midday sun beat down as a growing crowd jostled together. Next, craning to catch a glimpse of the man from Galilee's, who reportedly healed the sick and raised the dead through miraculous powers. Weaving through the gathering spectators came Peter and John, two fishermen who were among the first disciples of the wandering preacher known as Jesus. 
They'd witnessed him perform astonishing miracles with their own eyes and sought to vouch for his supernatural abilities to the people. Peter's gruff voice belted out, saying, Gather round, good people. We've seen miracle signs and wonders at the hands of this prophet that defy all earthly explanations. Murmurs rippled through the crowd as Peter launched into the tale of the furious storm on the Sea of Galilee. He described the peaceful scene at dusk that was shattered when violent gales descended out of nowhere. He said their boat was tossed about like a toy, the sails threatening to rip away, and they thought their end had come. Just then, Peter recalled awakening Jesus asleep in the stern, displaying an eerie calm. Amidst the vortex, Jesus stood and commanded the winds, saying, Peace, be still. In an instant, the air fell silent, and the water smoothed to glass. The crowd gasped and broke into astonished whispers upon hearing this. Had this man truly exerted mastery over the elements of nature themselves? John raised a hand for silence and shared his own astonishing memory. It was an occasion when Jesus demonstrated his dominance over the laws of nature, John explained while walking along the northern shores of Galilee. Jesus abruptly left the established path and began, um, striding out onto the water itself as if it were solid earth. Uh, the disciples watched, astonished, as Jesus defied physics and crossed the surface of the tossing waves. Impulsively, Peter cried out, asking Jesus if he could join him in the miraculous walk. Getting Jesus. Go ahead. Peter tentatively stepped out over the lapping waves, but after only a few paces, fear gripped him, and he plunged beneath the waters. Jesus grabbed Peter's hand, instantly stabilizing him. O oh, you of little faith! Jesus gently chided him as they returned together across the fierce water bridge, defying every conventional law of physics. At another time, the captivated crowd, uh started exclaiming and a shout went over the people's heads. Make way, make way. The gathering parted to reveal a group of four Mendena bearing a paralyzed man on a cot. Friends of the invalid pleaded with Jesus of Nazareth, asking him to have mercy on their friend. Pushing through to the front, the paralytic's companions lowered the cot before Jesus and begged him for healing. Jesus peered intently at the wasted figure for a long moment before boldly pronouncing, Your sins are forgiven. The religious leaders around the crowd murmured with shock. Some of them exclaimed angrily, saying it was shameful. They believed only God could forgive sins. But Jesus remained calm and turned to the upset priests and scholars to show them that he had the authority to forgive sins. Jesus nodded toward the paralyzed man, who looked amazed. Jesus told him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. The crowd gasped as the paralyzed man slowly stood up and then began to walk confidently. Everyone was astonished to see him moving with strength and speed, his legs completely healed. Thank God I'm cured, the man shouted with joy. The crowd cheered loudly as they gathered around Jesus, eager to witness more miracles. Peter and John answered questions from the amazed crowd, who noticed something remarkable. No ordinary person could perform such miracles. They realized Jesus was not just an ordinary teacher from Galilee, but they didn't fully understand the extent of Jesus' power. Yet there were even more incredible things to come that they couldn't imagine. Rumors are spreading that Jesus of Nazareth had conquered the grave itself. Had the crucified prophet truly defeated death and risen to life? Stay tuned, back from the dead. Caiaphas, the high priest of the Jewish Sanhedrin, paced his chamber anxiously. At dawn, three days after Jesus of Nazareth expired on a Roman cross, Rumors were circulating that the crucified preacher had risen from the dead, and Caiaphas aimed to squash such outrageous claims. Yet when the captain of his temple guardhouse, Malchus, arrived, his face was white with shock. 
The soldiers insist his tomb lies empty, Malchus stammered. They say angels descended in blinding radiance and rolled away the stone. Caiaphas tightened his emerald-encrusted vestments with trembling fingers. Could Jesus have supernaturally overcome death itself? Needing to know more, Caiaphas dispatched messengers to track down two former disciples named John and Peter. The disciples were found madly, telling anyone who would listen that they had encountered Jesus alive again outside his burial cave. Loving followers at first failed to recognize Jesus until he showed them his crucifixion wounds. The risen Messiah then broke bread with and tenderly comforted his disciples before disappearing once more. When John and Peter stood before high priest Caiaphas, recounting their experience, he was astonished at their transformation. Only days ago, these men cowered fearfully after Jesus' arrest. Now they radiated joyful courage. Utterly convinced of Christ's victory over the grave, John explained that even Jesus' enemies confirmed his tomb lay laid vacant that Sunday morning. The burial shrouds nearly, neatly folded within. Peter and John insisted over 500 disciples had seen Jesus resurrected. The news electrified Jerusalem. Could the Messiah truly have conquered death? Caiaphas processed this stunning report as best his stunned mind could grasp. Clearly, something unexplainable occurred beyond human understanding. Try as he might to explain it away, he could not escape the implications. As word of Jesus' resurrection became uncontainable, many skeptics converted on the spot. Even Jesus' doubting blood, Brother James saw Christ alive and proclaimed him Master and Lord. The shift in Jerusalem was so sharp, it took Caiaphas' breath away. In life, Jesus drew multitudes with his teachings and miracles. But now, in apparent victory over the grave, the Jewish citizens departed from the religious leaders daily and pledged their loyalty to the Master. This back from the dead Messiah commanded attention as the long-awaited Savior of Israel. The desert hermit John the Baptist had once declared that there was one mightier than I coming after me. Was this slain yet living Jesus of Nazareth indeed the one? As a deep foreboding gripped the high priest's heart, Caiaphas concealed himself alone in his rooms. Some hours later, his wife, Annas, discovered Caiaphas lying motionless on the floor. When she revived him, Caiaphas shared what happened. While studying various messianic prophecies, Caiaphas noticed a hooded figure suddenly standing before his desk. Caiaphas froze in shock. He instantly recognized those gentle yet piercing eyes. Jesus gazed mournfully at the high priest and said to him, Do not fear me. You condemned me, that you might go free. This was ordained by my father to be the last sacrifice for all people's sins. Devastated, Caiaphas collapsed, weeping at a Jesus' feet. After being helped up by Annas, Caiaphas discovered the resurrected Jesus had vanished, though the chamber's door remained barred from within. Shaken to his core, Caiaphas became convinced that the incredible stories were true. This Jesus had risen from the dead as promised, the anointed one of God foretold in Scripture. Moreover, the Messiah had graciously forgiven his own executioner. Uh, in the following weeks, Jesus appeared resurrected to many others, dispelling all doubts. At last, the Christ's astonished disciples grasped that God established Jesus' head over all creation. Through his victory over sin and death itself, the resurrected Messiah had conquered humanity's ultimate enemies, that fallen souls might be saved. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gathered his followers. On an olive-strewn hillside, the faithful eleven disciples worshipped their beloved master one final time as he commissioned them, saying, All authority has been given to me by my Father in heaven. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey. And surely I am with you even to the end of the age. 
Peter and John, former doubters, turn. Devoted disciples share intimate personal glimpses, proving Jesus is no mere man, but the foretold divine Messiah in disguise. Let's walk you through their astonishing eyewitness accounts. Eyewitnesses to the Messiah The curious crowds seeking Jesus had mostly dispersed from the village square when a temple guard approached the two lingering fishermen disciples named Peter and John. These former followers were known to have insider knowledge of the controversial preacher from Nazareth. How did you first come to know this Jesus? The guard inquired. He'd heard Jesus taught with unusual wisdom and wanted insights from those close to him, Peter explained. It began when his skeptical brother Andrew met Jesus and noticed something extraordinary in him. Andrew rushed to tell Peter that they'd found the Messiah. Though initially doubtful, Peter agreed to meet Jesus for himself. That meeting proved profoundly impactful. Peter confessed he saw goodness and purity of spirit emanating from Jesus that deeply touched him. And uh, when Jesus promised to teach them to fish for men, Peter experienced a life-changing call from God he couldn't ignore. John spoke up, adding, he too felt helplessly drawn to Jesus. After an electrifying introductory encounter, the genuine love and care Jesus radiated attracted multitudes almost magically, including himself. Yet Peter explained that while the average person only witnessed Jesus' public ministry of teaching and miracles as his disciples, they enjoyed intimate personal access to the Master. Watching Jesus pray or recite scripture verses, he seemed to know by heart and the disciples sensed mystical connections between Jesus God and the ancient holy writings. Moreover, Peter said that Jesus' sinless character testified to his heavenly origins. Never impatient, irritated, boastful, or unkind, Jesus dispensed only grace and truth. Though he suffered constant mistreatment, the disciples couldn't comprehend Jesus' unearthly peace amidst turmoil as though he communed with angels hidden from mortal eyes. The longer they knew him, the more Jesus' divine royalty shone through his humble facade. John added with excitement, though appearing as an ordinary man in unguarded moments, the very air seemed to crackle with. Incombustible holiness around Christ. His preternatural aura simply transcended human norms. Peter picked up describing one scene carved in his memory. Jesus glowing translucent while conversing with Moses and Elijah. The disciples couldn't grasp how Jesus summoned long-dead saints, but there was no doubting the supernatural display. A disembodied voice declared to them, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Sharing intimate moments like this, every disciple came to realize Jesus was no mere prophet. His words held creative power. Nature and spirits submitted to his directives. He knew individuals' innermost hearts and perceived situations miles away. Truly, Jesus was the foretold, anointed one. Coming straight from the Father's presence, John stated with awe. No other explanation made sense. Regarding his wisdom, miracles, sinless character, and glimpses of glory suggesting deity, the temple guard took in this remarkable testimony with a furrowed brow. If these once skeptical men spoke truthfully, who was this Jesus? A troublemaker? Lunatic legend in the making? Or inconceivably, God himself, clothed in flesh? Someone who held the keys to death's locked gates? The Messiah. As the guard wandered off, shaking his head, Peter and John exchanged tired smiles. Let the critics mock. They'd staked everything on the Galilean who proved himself divine redeemer uh, by returning to life after horrific execution. Jesus was exactly who he claimed. The resurrection and the life. The king of the Jews and lord of all. The high priest Caiaphas ordered Jesus crucified. Now haunted by rumors of Christ's resurrection, Caiaphas meets the risen Messiah in a vision that changes history. 
Let's see what transpires. The high priest who met the risen Messiah Caiaphas woke up suddenly, breathing heavily, his fancy sheets soaked in sweat. He'd been having terrifying nightmares ever since he ordered Jesus of Nazareth to be crucified three days ago. And now, hearing rumors of Jesus being alive again only added to his inner turmoil. In the dim light of his room, Caiaphas remembered the recent events in Jerusalem. When Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Caiaphas' guards treated him brutally, mocking and beating him. False witnesses twisted Jesus' words to accuse him of blasphemy. Before Caiaphas, Caiaphas demanded, Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus, though tired, replied, Yes, I am, and you will see me with power coming on heavenly clouds. Angry at Jesus' claim, Caiaphas tore his clothes and declared him worthy of death for saying he was equal to God. After the Jewish council agreed, Caiaphas handed Jesus over to Pontius Pilate, telling him to crucify the king of the Jews. In the days that followed, Caiaphas felt darkness growing in his soul as he heard more reports. Like the sky turning dark in the middle of the day, when Jesus was on the cross, the temple curtain ripped. When Jesus died, and despite guards, Jesus came out of the tomb alive. Could Caiaphas have misjudged this miraculous prophet? As high priest, he was duty-bound to validate messianic candidates. Yet Caiaphas allowed politics and jealousy to blind him to the truth Jesus represented. And now, enduring sleepless nights, he felt soul-crushing remorse that he'd executed the long-awaited anointed one, splashing water on his face. To calm down, Caiaphas went to his study to look at important Hebrew prophecies. But the scriptures didn't make him feel better about his troubled conscience. You condemned me so that you might go free. A voice spoke behind him. Caiaphas looked up, suddenly surprised. There in front of his desk stood Jesus of Nazareth, surrounded by a soft glow of light. Jesus looked at Caiaphas with kind eyes. Um, and said softly, This was planned by my father to be the final sacrifice for everyone's sins. At first, Caiaphas was shocked and couldn't move, but then he fell to his knees crying at Jesus' feet. After what felt like a long time, he woke up to his worried wife, Annas, shaking him and asking him what was wrong with him. Caiaphas, still shaken, told her about his unusual experience. Truly, this Jesus must be the Son of God, he whispered. From that moment on, Caiaphas' whole understanding of spirituality changed. In the following weeks, Jesus appeared alive to many others, removing all doubts. Even James, Jesus' doubtful brother, saw him alive and acknowledged him as Lord. Belief in the risen Messiah spread quickly through Jerusalem and nearby areas. With agitation, disturbing the Jewish leadership, Caiaphas judiciously avoided public view, praying in solitude instead. The crushing weight of remorse over sending Jesus to the cross remained heavily on his shoulders. When the Feast of Pentecost arrived fifty days after Passover, Caiaphas knew he could no longer delay it. As Jerusalem teemed with out-of-town Jewish pilgrims, the high priest finally emerged. Calling an emergency meeting of the full Sanhedrin council, Caiaphas dramatically announced his resignation as high priest, stunning all hearers. Voice cracking, he confessed his grief. Grievous error, declaring Jesus a heretic when abundant evidence confirmed he was the anointed one foretold. Expressing deep remorse over his instrumental role in condemning the innocent Son of God to death, Caiaphas concluded tearfully that Hirohai is utterly unworthy to lead God's people. As the council digested this bombshell admission, Caiaphas removed his glittering high priestly vestments and exited to shouts of shock and dismay. 
His longtime deputy, Jonathan, was swiftly voted in as Jerusalem's new religious leader. Retreating to his estate, the disgraced former high priest Caiaphas spent his remaining years all by himself, frequently weeping for his rash actions against the Messiah. Meanwhile, Jesus' explosive resurrection became the catalyst that launched a transformational new faith branching out from Jerusalem to infiltrate the farthest reaches of the Roman Empire and beyond. When Caiaphas resigns in disgrace, his successor, Jonathan, adopts cautious policies toward the growing Jesus movement. Yet Christianity explodes despite the turmoil fulfilling Christ's great commission. Don't go anywhere yet. A new high priest for a new faith. As news of Caiaphas' resignation spread, Chief Elder Annas called an emergency meeting of the entire 71-member Sanhedrin court. They quickly discussed who would replace Caiaphas, and Anna suggested his son-in-law, Jonathan Beninus. Though Jonathan was young, at 36, he acted swiftly to position himself as the next high priest. Through behind-the-scenes promises, Jonathan easily gained unanimous support to lead Jerusalem's spiritual affairs. Aware of the sensitive situation, Jonathan approached the topic of the controversial Jesus cautiously. As a Sadducee, he didn't believe in resurrection or miracles. However, with more and more people converting to Judaism, he couldn't oppose those who worshipped Jesus as if he had risen from the dead. Jonathan didn't fully grasp how quickly the movement started by Jesus would grow. Within 30 years, tens of thousands of followers, known as believers, were living in cities all over the Roman Empire. The apostles, who were given a mission by Jesus, boldly preached about their executed leader coming back to life and offering salvation through him. This message reached not only ordinary people, but also government officials, making Jonathan recognize the power of the Christian church. By 63 AD, Jonathan found himself in a difficult position. As radical zealots rebelled against Roman rule, he worried that the widespread presence of Christianity in Jerusalem might make the Romans suspicious of rebellion. Rebellion. Ten years into his leadership, Jonathan realized he needed new strategies to lead in changing times. The oppressive rule of the Romans eventually led to a full-scale Jewish revolt from 66 to 70 AD. Despite this turmoil, the young Christian church in Jerusalem survived and went on to change the course of history. The success of Christianity's spread can be traced back to the instructions given by its founder, Jesus of Nazareth, to his 500 disciples shortly before he ascended, I have all authority in heaven and on earth, so go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and remember, I am always with you until the end of time. Caiaphas plays an important role in the biblical accounts of Christ's final days. His declaration that Jesus should be killed is quoted by John as prophesying his sacrificial death for the nation of Israel. The three synoptic gospels also prominently feature the conniving high priest orchestrating a plot against the popular teacher from Galilee. Outside of scripture, Caiaphas appears in the historical writings of Josephus Flavius. This Jewish historian served as a commander in Galilee during the first Jewish revolt against Rome. After his capture, Josephus earned favor with the imperial family by writing histories that were sympathetic to Rome. Still, his mention of Caiaphas, along with the year he assumed the high priesthood, lent early extra-biblical attestation to his existence. In 1990, Archaeologists uncovered startling physical evidence that Caiaphas was a real historical figure. While excavating a burial site south of the old city of Jerusalem, they discovered beautifully decorated bone boxes with Aramaic inscriptions. 
one was labeled as Joseph, son of Caiaphas. It even contained the remains of a 60-year-old man. The appropriate age given Caiaphas year of ascent to high priest mentioned by Josephus. Science could now weigh in on textual accounts of this pivotal biblical character. As a result of modern archaeology, there is little doubt the high priest Caiaphas played a real unsavory role in the political maneuverings that led to the death of Jesus Christ. His decision to sacrifice one man for his nation changed the course of history more than he could have imagined. Like this video and subscribe for more exciting videos. Also, drop your movie suggestions in the comments.